What is up, tubers? We're back for some more drafting. This time on Magic Online, I have joined another one of these 64-player single elimination vintage cube drafts, so should be pretty fun, um, but it might be over very quickly. These events always attract um, pro tour winners, world champions, so don't be surprised if we have some pretty great people in the draft and maybe even in our pod. Oh yeah, lots, lots of big names in this one already. Um, but anyways, we'll jump into our pick one, pack one, where we have not opened any power. Obviously, that's the first thing you scan for. So what are we looking at here? Workshop is extremely powerful, though generally tends to wheel. Yagmas will for the storm nonsense. I think this is actually a pretty weak pick one, pack one. I kind of like taking the workshop and maybe seeing if we can just do some big broken artifact deck. Or at least lead off with that and see from there. Man, another pretty weak pack here. We could take like the windswept teeth. A um, couple of duels, the fountain and the foundry. But again, power level wise, I am not too thrilled about this as far as vintage cube is concerned. Corpse Dance, I guess, has a lot of potential, right? You can Corpse Dance some Eldrazi and whatnot for good value, but I think the safest pick here is just going to be the fetch. Yeah, not a great start. It is what it is, though. A couple more fetches we can take here. Probably going to lean towards the blue one. Maybe just take the Misty. Um, Retrofitter Foundry is pretty good. The ready's okay, but that tends to wheel. Yeah, I'm just going to keep taking lands. I mean, nothing wrong with just taking a bunch of fixing here to start off the draft since we don't really have a good direction. We haven't seen anything extremely powerful yet. No, there's Brain Freeze if we wanted to take that and Plans open for, like, Breach, Freeze, LED nonsense. Let's see. Leovold, Solid, Exploration. Eh, if that was Fast Bond, I'd probably take it. Uh, there's a Wooded Foothills if we just wanted to take another fetch. <laughs> kind of like taking the Brain Freeze. No artifact I really want to take for the Workshop. Both of those tend to wheel anyways. That would be a third green fetch, though. That would make any green duel uh, pretty impressive. Ugh. Why do I want to take Brain Freeze? It's just the upside is so high, and I've already taken so many lands. Let's do it. Let's take the Freeze. Maybe we get past a Breach, and then maybe we can find ourselves Lion's Eye Diamond or... If we get really lucky, we open the Black Lotus in one of the uh, remaining packs. But you don't like to see it. I, I like The lands here are good, but we didn't really get anything to um, put us in a solid direction here yet. Which is fine. I mean, we have the lands. Maybe I should just take the Sparrow's Headquarters, for example, here. Take the Bant land, which either of our lands can go fetch. Uh, Charter Course is okay. No artifacts here. Venser, Grave Titan, Kinnon can be fun. Kinnon can go infinite with like Basalt Monolith, for example. Infinite colorless, anyways. Yeah, I don't like it, but it makes sense to take the fetch. I am very tempted now to take the Zurin Orb and keep our eyes open for, like, the Fast Bond Crucible. Hmm. We did pass Ramanap already. I don't think I want Forge or Revoker. Sure, you know what? What the hell? We'll take all these combo pieces, and uh, maybe we can make something work with that. Dig through time, not bad here if we're going to go a combo route. Works well with a couple fetches. Worm coil for the factory, or rather the workshop is okay. I guess Utopia Sprawl could be okay as well. 
You know what? I kind of like taking the dig through time. It does appear we're going more combo-ish. Let's see the Zagoth Triome now. Fetchable with both Misty and Heath if we want. Rona is fine. Spellseeker can grab Brain Freeze. Spellseeker is generally pretty good in the decks that I build. I'm going to take that over the, the Tri-Land. Let's see. Colonnade, meh. Wayfinder. <laughs> I mean, I have a couple of fetches, but I don't think Wayfinder is where we want to be. Sahili could be okay. Mightstone Weakstone for a workshop could be okay. Now let's try taking the Mightstone Weakstone. And I guess I'll just take the blue card here. Steal Seraph for Workshop. That seems pretty medium. Seal of Removal, I guess, is an okay sideboard card for playing against the creature-based decks. This has been a really, really bad pack one, though. Take the Mutt over the Sea Chrome Coast. We do have a combo start, or it looks we're, like we're trying to be a combo deck, but... Man, that was a pretty miserable pack one. Yeah, this, this could be a quick draft. Like I said, this is a single elimination. So um, in these 64-player drafts, what happens is you need to go 3-0. and it's, it's two drafts, but it's single elimination, and you need to go 3-0 in the first draft to qualify for the second draft. So what happens is there are eight pods of eight, and each... 3-0 from the first pod then makes up a new draft, a new top eight. So winning once or twice, not good enough. You have to go the full 3-0. And only then do you get to draft again. Oh, a couple of decent wheels. I think image is generally pretty solid, even though Revoker is not terrible. All right, pack two. Well, we did wheel the Kinnon, and we are getting Basalt monolith, uh, monolith here for infinite colorless if we wanted to do that. What are we looking at? Re Reanimate might be the individual strongest card here. That or Solitude, perhaps. Pest Infestation's quite nice. Emery can be okay, though it doesn't look really good in our deck yet. Uh, am I supposed to just take the Basalt Monolith now to go with the Kinnon? It's also good with Workshop, but it's not really a card I want to be first picking. That's the problem. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. This gives us a good direction, I suppose, and it has a lot of upside if it uh, works out. Okay, Displacer Kitten's also really nice with cards like the Basalt Monolith. Also really good with the Mightstone Weakstone. This also tends to wheel, though, so I think what I'm going to do here is instead take the Narset. And maybe look for um, any of the big draw 7 effects. Passing a Ballista. There's Crucible. So we have the, we have the Zurin Orb. We can take the Crucible and try to get the... Um, Explor not exploration, the fast bond, either in the last part of this pack or in pack three somewhere. Also, Crucible's not even bad anyways with a couple of fetches and already a cycling land. I'm just going to take it to make sure we have it since we already have the orb. So now picking up fast bond is a very good play. Or rather, it makes fast bond a very high priority pickup. Okay, we're doing stuff. Um, is it great? Maybe not, but at least it's some sort of direction which we didn't really have after the first pack, I would say. Um, so yeah, both Misty and Heath looking good. Would like to pick up some normal fetch it or duels. Uh, we're getting an Oko now, and I'm already in blue-green. Sure. <laughs> Uh, what are we losing out on? Talisman of Impulse would be good. Flash could be interesting if we picked up, um, 
Well, Flash is just an interesting combo card by itself. And then you look to pick up like the World Spine Worm or the Triplicate Spirits. Yeah, Oko passing Talisman, Ewit. I guess City of Traders is okay. Not going to pass that though. Chalice, Relic. There's a Twin. There's a Waterlog Grove. Because we have the Workshop, I'm kind of interested in taking the Relic over the Chalice. Even though Chalice can be played on two mana, whereas Relic is always three, right? That seems okay. Urza. It's a really late Archon of Cruelty. Actually, a couple of really late good black cards. Could consider taking Regrowth here, too. Regrowth is really powerful as well, but eh, I guess I'll take the Urza. Okay. Doing some kind of weird artifacty thing. Uh... Might even still just end up playing the Mutt. I don't know, is Kinnon good enough with just Basalt Monolith? I, I guess it does work with Relic, technically, but... Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. I guess it works with Urza, too, technically. Wow, good pack. Solemn, Trinket Mage, although I guess that only grabs Zurin Orb right now, which we don't know for sure if we're going to play. Rafine's Tower... White, blue, black? I guess that doesn't do much either, does it? Steam Vents? Steam Vents also doesn't currently do anything. I guess it's just going to be solemn. Could take the stowaway, I suppose. I mean, the lands are going to be safe since we still have a full pack three to go, and I wouldn't be surprised if we find something worth splashing, but we'll take the solemn here. Seems like the reanimate deck might have been very open. It's probably too late to try to go into that, right? I should just take the Jace here. Man, I'm super tempted to take the Exhum. What pick is this? This is pick 8. There's a very small chance that reanimate wheels, but I already passed, like, the Archon and stuff, too. Yeah. Just take the Jace. Wheel the Talisman. Take that over... Enlightened Tutor, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, the Ballista gives us some kind of artifact mana sink. There's the Daze on the wheel as well. Uh, I don't remember what pack the Kitty Cat was in. Was it this one? Displacer Kitten? Somebody might have taken my Displacer Cat. Again, I don't remember what exactly pack it was in. So Spellseeker currently bad as well. Consider on the wheel. Yeah, it seems like the cat might have gotten taken. Mizix's Mastery. Scarab God. There's a chance we play the Scarab God. Damn. Kind of wanted that uh, cat to come back pretty bad, but... I guess I don't have any infinite combos with the cat right now. And we already have the Hole Breaker Horror, which... Damn, that's a late him to Turok. I should have been black in this seat. Man, we would have had a pretty good reanimate deck, I think. Oh well, that's fine. Ah, Trinket Mage coming back could be good. Alright, give me some power. Man, it always feels really bad in these these drafts when you don't get power. We got kind of close to power. We got Mana Vault. I guess that's better than nothing, but oof. Oh, picking up the Mana Vault also makes the Trinket Mage more playable. Still waiting on that. Um, still waiting on that Fast Bond, though, for the Zern Orb Crucible Fast Bond. But yeah, as I was saying, these drafts always feel really bad when you don't get power, and then you end up playing the decks, you know, in rounds two and three usually that have one, sometimes even more pieces of power. Okay, there's the Teferi. That is the combo piece we were talking about with um with Displacer Kitten. Although it does still work with the Holebreaker Horror too, right? 
Oh, no, it doesn't. No, no, no. Sorry. Kitten flickers, whereas the hole breaker bounces. Hole breaker works with, like, the, the cheap artifacts, if you have enough of the cheap artifacts. But Teferi, Displacer, Kitten, and, like, a Mana Vault or something is infinite mana and card draw. So I guess I'm just going to take the Urza Saga here, then. Saga over Teferi. That seems right. Passing a really nice Talisman. But that might end up wheeling anyways. Grim Monolith. Three different duels. There is a Mana Leak here as well. Yeah, let's take the, take the Monolith. I still need another Win Con. Um, upheaval would be good. I don't have a draw seven yet. We're getting a lot of a, the good pieces, but maybe not the, the full-on combos. I think we already saw Breeding Pool, but Tropical Island is a possible pickup as well, right? Because currently I just have the Spara's Headquarters as a duel, which is fine. But the fact that it enters tapped is a little bit awkward. I guess the Misty can grab an untapped blue or green regardless. It's just the Heath that doesn't necessarily right now. There's Volcanic Island. Let's see. Gear Hulk has very little. Shredder's always good. Battle Sphere is usually pretty good. Really nice with Urza. It's a green white talisman here. I guess I did just say I needed another win con, so let's take the battle sphere, especially since we have some decent artifact ramp now. Oh, there's the upheaval. Okay, this is getting better. Passing a flooded strand here, but upheaval is another nice win con. Sure, sure, sure. So now we're pretty good on that front. In fact, I'm probably going to end up cutting the hole breaker horror. I just don't think it's good enough in this deck. And now we have plenty of other ways to win. Um, that was pick five. So three more chances at fast bond. And if we don't get fast bond, I am not going to be running the Zurin Orb. I could still run Crucible. Crucible with Saga is cute. It's a little bit slow. And it's fine with the two fetches, and if you're going to end up cycling this land, it's fine. It's okay with, like, Jace. Eh, I'd say it's pretty weak overall. Thespian's Stage. We did see Dark Depths, and you can Thespian Stage Urza Saga to good utility. But I'm feeling that this is pretty, probably just a brainstorm, right? Oh, you know what? I completely overlooked the fact that uh, I can grab the Walking Ballista with Trinket Mage 2. So even if I do end up cutting Zern Orb, I still have two different targets. That's good. Nothing to do with Goblin Welder. Yeah, I'll we'll just take Brainstorm. There is Wheel of Fortune. I did want a draw 7. I have weak red fixing, but not the... Worst red fixing. I have the Spire Bluff Canal. I have Talisman of Creativity. I have Coalition Relic. Miscalculation is a really safe, good pickup. But I feel like the Wheel of Fortune might be right. Ugh. No, nah, I'm going to play it safe. I'll take the damn miscalc. And there's Memory Jar, too. That one's fine. It's an artifact. Free rolls on Otawara if we want to. Frantic Search, also okay. Crucible with Frantic Search is also fine, I suppose. So there's the Dark Depths. I didn't take the Thespians. I don't even know if I'd want to be playing those anyways. We don't need a red, white, black source. I could, I could counter draft the Lauren, I guess. Right, because even if I get the Thespian stage on the wheel, I don't think it's worth running that combo. Let's do that instead. Nice talisman on the wheel. Perfect.
<laughs> a lot of the land deck coming through here. Hex Mage to go at the Dark Depths, Reclaimer for the Dark Depths. Plateau not doing anything for us. I guess I'll just hate draft the Hex Mage. Gear Hulk got slightly better, but still not very good. Picked up like Miscalc and Brainstorm. That's not. That is not worthwhile. Let's counter draft the Rabble Master, counter draft Knight of Autumn. Again, this is pod drafting, so hate drafting is not completely irrelevant. Um, it is mainly irrelevant, though. The first person I'm playing is going to be cross pod from us. So that only helps in the long term if we make it past the first round, you know. Uh, I mean, this deck's fine. I wish it had in more interaction. Picked up, like, Counterspell or Force... In fact, we saw very little Counter Magic. We saw Mana Leak and the Miscalc. I guess I passed Mystic Confluence, didn't I? Pick one, pack one. All right, overall or artifact count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's plenty for workshop. Spellseeker for miscalculation, brainstorm, consider. Not good enough. Crucible, again, would be okay, but I don't think we quite want it. If we win, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of our wins are just from, like, the Urza Saga tokens. <laughs> In any case, we will pause it here, and we will get to deck building when it pops up. All right, deck building has begun. Let's figure this baby out. Is this a deck that I can go 3-0 with? Probably. We're going to have a hard time with <laughs> a lot of the good decks in the format. That is to say, I feel like the aggro decks are probably going to give us a hard time. And the mid-rangey decks are going to give us a hard time. In fact, the control decks are probably going to give us a hard time. And then the decks that are just 40 lands are also going to give us a hard time. So, in conclusion, I concede. No, we're fine. Do I think this is a 3-0 quality deck? Maybe not. Could we 3-0? Absolutely. We do have some kind of cute combo. We have the Kinnon, we have the Monolith, we have the Walking Ballista, so that is a way to insta-kill somebody. Um, I don't think we need 17 lands here, even if one of them is Saga. But do I have anything I want to include instead? What am I adding? I guess we could just throw in the Crucible. Feels pretty weak though. Could just throw in the mutt for helping smooth out our draws. Could just add seal of removal for some more interaction, although I don't really want to be main decking that, I feel like. I don't think we want the hole breaker horror. God, why couldn't I have gotten Fast Bond? Ugh. Fast Bond would have also been great with our upheaval, too. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just pretty sure we don't need 17 lands here. All right, let's double check our 
Crucible. What is it good with? Two fetches, Saga, sometimes the Cycling Land. Maybe okay with Consider. Decent with Jace. Decent sometimes with Jar. Decent with sometimes Upheaval. I will say that the Crucible and Dig Through Time are a little bit awkward together. Because presumably I will be wanting to exile some amount of land with Dig Through Time. Yeah, you know what, I'm just going to add the Mutt. We do have two ways to actually activate the uh, Unearth as well. We have the Relic and the Talisman of Creativity, so... That seems fine. I don't. I, I think seventeen lands would be way too many, even with some of these utility lands. Then let's see. They suggest nine and two, and I think we can go eight and three, no problem. It still gives us plenty of blue sources. We don't have something like a high tide, anyways. And Oko obviously would like to come down ASAP. I don't think you want to run out Kinnon normally on just like turn two. Because it's one of our combo pieces, I think generally Kinnon is like, hold on to it until it makes the most sense. Alright, let's give this a shot. Go to round one here of this 64-player single elimination Vintage Cube Drafto. Alright, here we are for round one of this Vintage Draft. Sure, I don't know what kind of hand... I would want to mulligan into. I guess one with Mishra's Workshop, but this seems good enough to keep, of course. Hollowed Fountain, turn one from our opponent. Uh, yeah, let's just get Jace online. The sooner the better. Okay, we might be playing against a control deck, unfortunately. Fairy, Mastermind in response. That means they're going to get to draw an extra card. Um, let's see, what are we discarding then? Maybe Might Stone, Weak Stone here makes sense. So, we're going to want to be looting with Jace on our opponent's turn then. Whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, yeah. This is not going to be good for us if our opponent is just sitting on a bunch of counter magic. Uh, I don't need to play around Miscalc since we have the Miscalc. Mana Drain, okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and image the Fairy Mastermind here too. So our opponent is going to have upwards of 7 mana this turn. That's probably fine. We did pass both to fair. yep. We did pass both to Fairies. They're just going to immediately down tick and kill that one. That's okay. Mm. Can't say this is looking great for us. Uh, yeah, let's just discard the monolith. And I'm going to assume there's a counter in our future. They have the leak as well. Sadly, I do play out the land, right? Because we have the um, Battle Sphere in hand. This is not going to be a good matchup. 
Not that I said anything was a good matchup for us, but... <laughs> Uh, nothing good to flash back here. Have to imagine they're on more counters. So this is just going to be like a cast battle sphere. It gets countered concede. Is that what you're telling me? Because it definitely feels that way. Uh, no. Graveyard Trespasser. Okay, Hidden Black. All right, I'm going to try to cast it. And when this gets uh, confluenced, we can just concede because we'll be dead to the Incubate tokens. Crypto Command. That works too. All right, GG's. So... Bad matchup is bad. Ugh. I guess we want to bring in the Holebreaker Horror here. Ugh, this is a yikes, though. Uh, honestly, in this type of matchup, Brain Freeze isn't even that crazy. I mean, depending on how much pressure they have, if they're super controly, they might not be able to pressure me all that fast, and then a Brain Freeze for even like nine cards could finish them off, but... I don't think I'm going to bring that in after what we saw currently. Um, let me just cut the Might Stone Weak Stone here. I'm going to need to have a busted start. We're going to need to have one of our workshop hands or something or hope that they don't have counter magic early. This feels like a mulligan to me. Uh, I mean, we'll keep this, but it's not good. We do currently have two of the three combo pieces in hand, right? Kinnon and Trinket Mage can grab the Ballista, so maybe I can rip, um, what do you call it, the Basalt Monolith? I want to mulligan down to five, so in this situation, I think we just run out the cannon on turn two. Try to get underneath their counters. They're going to go with the stowaway, sure. This is actually a pretty good turn for us. We get to go talisman into image on the stowaway. Kind of clever. This card's subtlety. More counter type magic. And there's the shark again, sure. So let's get looting. And then we can go Urza into Trinket Mage, I believe. Wait, is that how does Urza work with Kinnon that like that? I think it does. find out it does not okay 
Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana. Okay, so this is a different ability. I guess we don't get to do that. Sure. Shocks themselves for Hollowed Fountain. Oh, they have ninjutsu. Shoot. Okay. Fallen Shinobi. Good luck. Please don't hit anything worthwhile. Dig through time and Urza's Saga. All right. They do get a free dig through time, but I guess... I mean, that is bad with the Seed Shark, yes, but... I suppose it could have been worse. And they already played a land for turn to be able to do that, so they get, don't get to play my Saga. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well. If the stowaway finds us a land, then uh, this is really good. That works. Let's see. So we're going to discard Solemn now. Three, four, five, six, seven. Battle Sphere. Trinket Mage. Let's grab Ballista here. Um, and I'm going to play out the Ballista right now since we know they have so much counter magic in their deck. Okay, I mean, hey, this looks good for us. Well, do they have a balance or something? I'm just going to chump with Trinket Mage here. Or Toxic Deluge, I guess. Time Warp! Ah. Okay. We're not dead, currently. I don't think I was supposed to finish off the Shinobi with Ballista. We need the blockers for their uh, incubator tokens. I think at this point we're just blocking with Kinnon, right? Even though Kinnon with that much mana is nice, we have Urza with that much mana if they don't do anything to it. So Urza bounce, hold up, counterspell, I guess? Or Mana Drain or whatever. They're going to bounce the big artifact. Alright. Um, well, we can't kill him this turn because of that 8-8 Incubator token. Do we want to start off by spinning Urza? That's not like the worst. Or maybe we just attack in with the Stowaway and the Battle Sphere this turn. <sighs> but they would trade Incubator Token for Battle Sphere. A lot of different options we have this turn. I think I'm just going to start by sending the stowaway to face and see what we loot into. Memory jar. Hmm. 
Then I think we're gonna spin Urza once here. <laughs> well, actually, that's not bad. Because I can go like this. I can now cast my memory jar. And they can't counter it because I can miscalculate their count. Oh, wait. No, yes, I can. Yeah. Even with Teferi, if they go for a counter here, I walking ballista shoot the Teferi for one first. Yep, perfect. So we actually can beat the Teferi. Yeah, there's the mana leak. All right, so ping the Teferi. Nice. That is a lot of incubator tokens, my god. They just cryptic command me and tap down for the win, I guess. Ah, so is there anything I can memory jar into? I don't think so. Figured they had that too, but what am I supposed to do? Yeah, just too much counter magic. Can't beat it. Man. Brutal. Don't think I have any outs. <laughs> had I memory jarred after the counters, would I have been able to do anything? I would have had three, four, three, two, five. No, because we already lost the Kinnon and whatnot. Okay, good beats. Well, that was really, really annoying, huh? I mean, way too much counter magic for us. Bad matchup. But like I said, I don't know if anything was particularly a good matchup for us. So that's how, hey, that's how some of these things go. Like I said, these 64 player drafts, you have to win every time. So one loss, you're done. You have to go 3-0 in the first draft to qualify for the second. Um, like I mentioned during the draft, I probably should have been in black. I think the reanimator deck would have been really, really good. But uh, our slower blue deck just got completely pummeled by counter magic so good beats ggs thanks for watching friends hopefully that was still interesting and entertaining even though we got demolished i'll see you back next time for some more Bye bye